What's up, everybody? Um, I just wanted to see if I might could encourage some of you with something I've been reading lately. Uh, I've been reading this book, The Awakening in Wales. It's a um, it's Jesse Penn Lewis's account of the Welsh Revival of 1904. I highly recommend it. Um, and as I've been reading this, God has been really stirring my heart for revival. And, and actually, I'm becoming more and more convinced that we are poised for a revival right now, um, maybe a worldwide awakening which is very, very exciting. Um, you know, in, in this book, she talks about how leading up to this incredible revival in Wales, how uh, there were all these people who were coming to this realization that they were desperately in need of God, that there was nothing that they could do apart from God working in them and working through them. And, and this desperate um, need drove them to prayer. And they began to pray for an outpouring of God's Spirit, an awakening in their own lives. And then when they received that outpouring of God's Spirit, that, that fresh awakening in their own lives, they then... Um, carried that to their churches or their families, and that's how the revival started. Um, I thought I would just kind of share with you some of the highlights, the things that I've, that I've read in here. Um, it talks about how um, one of the indicators that, that one pastor had that he needed revival, personal revival, was that his passion wasn't what it once was. And, and actually, a friend pointed it out to him. And then that awakened in him this, this realization that, yeah, he had drifted from the Lord. And you know just on a personal level, that's something that God's been convicting me of. Um, he's, he's been showing me that my love for him isn't what it once was and that I really need to return to him with all my heart. And so that's been my prayer as I've been crying out to him for personal revival is, Lord, I want to love you more. You know, I, wanna, I want to want you more. Um, another way that they talk about it uh, in the book was, they felt a dissatisfaction with their current experience with God. And that's another thing that I've been feeling is like as I read the, the Bible, I, I compare what I'm reading to my own life and I'm like, there, there is just too big of a gap between my own life and what I read that's possible um, in the scriptures. And so I'm just crying out, God, um, I, want, I want more of you. I'm recognizing that there is so much more to God than what I'm currently experiencing. Um, she says in here, prayer preceded the first Pentecost. And prayer will always precede an outpouring of God's Spirit. She says, for prayer prepares the channels for the Holy Spirit to fill. She talks about how when we pray fervent, desperate prayer for more of God, that even those prayers where we don't experience God like pouring out his spirit on us, that we are still doing work that's necessary. We're digging channels in our souls so that when God pours himself out, that there is something for him to fill. And so that's the way I've thought about it recently is I've just been crying out to God for personal revival, revival in our church, revival in the state of Vermont. I, I'm, I see it like that. Like I'm digging channels in my soul for 
channels of, of greater desire because it's like the more I pray for God, the more I want of him. Um, it's, it talks about that when, um, when God poured out his spirit on people, that the Bible became brand new to them, that they, they went to the word. It was like it was the first time that they were reading the word. Um, they just were so hungry for it and God gave them a fresh, um, revelation. Um, another thing that I read in here that was really encouraging, it says that before, uh, in 1903, so the year leading up to the revival, which was in 04, there was this conference and that many at the conference expressed this sense that, um, it says many saw a door of hope for revival in Wales in the near future. Um, so many of them saw that there was this possibility of revival coming in the near future. And, um, and, and I'm hearing that right now. I'm hearing more and more pastors, not only here in Vermont, but um, but around the world talking about revival. This is on the minds and hearts of people that I'm, that I'm listening to. So God is putting this on people's radar right now. And I believe we right now are seeing a door of hope for revival in the near future. And then this is what it says the, re, the response to that was. It says that there was a more intense consecration that there were habits, bad habits set aside, that there was a fuller dependence on the power of the Holy Spirit. Um, many testified that the Bible was a new book to them and that prayer was easier and more powerful than it used to be. It is manifest that better days are about to dawn and blessed are those believers who are willing now to consecrate themselves as worthy instruments for the Holy Spirit in the next revival. And that's my heart right now. I want to be a useful instrument in the hand of God if he brings revival. I want my, my life to be consecrated. I want my life to be purified. I want my heart to be purified so that if he brings revival, when he brings revival, that I could be an instrument in his hand, that I could be one of the tools that he uses when that time comes. And so if you're listening to this, I just wanna encourage you to um, take that sense of need that maybe you've been feeling, that sense of desperation, that sense of my hands are tied. I have, I, I have nothing to offer to the world right now. There's nothing I can do. There's no good I can produce. And let that sense of, of weakness and need drive you to your knees and begin to cry out to God to fill you afresh with his Holy Spirit so that you can be used of him in the days ahead. Let's pray for revival. Let's pray for revival in our own homes, in our churches, in our state, and across the globe.